Hello, everybody. This is me again, Matt Harris. Um, I spoke earlier, but now I'm going to be moderating, um, as was mentioned, a very important topic. I'm happy to introduce Jennifer Lammer here. Hello, hello. Um, so Jennifer is the CEO and founder of Diamond Nest Egg, a New York-based financial wellness and education company. She runs corporate workshops and webinars for medium-sized businesses, helping their employees improve financial literacy and build a nest egg with strong focus on student loan repayment, which you all be interested in, insurance and building generational wealth. Um, she spent two decades at major banks and consulting firms like Booz Allen, Bear Stearns, Goldman, GP, JP. Um, she received her MBA from Harvard Business School, graduated summa cum laude from NYU Stern, mostly on scholarship. In her spare time, she cooks. I don't know how you have all the spare time, but I don't cook cooks, <laughs> <laughs> watches the Avengers and Star Wars with her four kids and husband and loves testing the latest fintech apps. Um, all right. Welcome. Great to be here. So we've got you here with all those accolades to obviously tell us a little bit about probably one of the scariest things yeah. about considering internship and grad school in general. Mm -hmm. um, probably most of the people here have already had to go through some of these steps, but it'd be nice to hear from someone who knows what they're talking about, because I don't right. think many of us did when we were <laughs> going through this process or when I was. Um, so I've got some questions that I'll ask you, but since you're the only speaker, feel free to take it away wherever, okay. wherever you want it to go as well. Um, but if I can kick it off by getting us started by asking you, um, how has your experience been with student loans? Who and how did you seek guidance about pursuing and navigating student loans? Right. So the who who did I seek guidance from is very simple. No one um, of outside course. of FAFSA because nobody talks to you about this kind of stuff. Um, but I had the fortune of just I was in finance for the longest time. I studied it um, and I knew what it meant to get into debt. And so even before I was going to grad school, as I was an undergrad, I was already working full time. So I went to college uh, full time. I worked a 45 hour a week job. And I and I was already on a scholarship, but I had I still had to pay for my own share. So um, I saved up enough, and I graduated with only about you know three or four thousand dollars of um, student loan debt from NYU, um, and put that money away. And I got a scholarship at Harvard, but again had to pay for room and board. And I still left Harvard with fifty thousand dollars. Having said that. And which doesn't sound like a lot of money these days, right? But back in the it was like 20 years ago, it was a quite a bit of money. Can't tell from the wrinkles, you know, here. But um, you know, it was quite a bit of money. And my approach always is I really, you know, I don't like debt at all. Nobody likes debt, but I literally I, I'm one of those people that can get one of those zero APR cards and I know I don't have to pay anything off for 18 months, but I can't sleep at night, so I have to go pay it off anyway. Um beforehand. So I work, I mean, I worked my butt off. I worked my butt off for a year. Um I ate ramen, uh, didn't go out. Um, was it fun? No, but was it great to be free of debt? It really was. And we still have that. I mean, I have a mortgage now, but it's all very reasonable. Um, but having said that, most of our clients are in their 20s and 30s. And our average client has about 250,000 plus of student loan debt. Um, so it is very stressful if you don't have anybody to talk about it. And that's why I actually went into student loans for my clients because when they told me how much debt they had. And so my background is I actually, I've been away from the U.S. for about 15 years. I worked overseas in London and Germany and came back, grew up in Brooklyn. Now I'm back in New York. So I kind of missed this whole student loan crisis that happened. Um, and so when I sat down with my first like five clients and every number that walked in was a six digit debt number, we, I said to them, okay, we're going to have to figure this out. Um, it, it's very stressful. You know, you, you, you have basically three, I'm going to keep going unless you have questions for me. Okay. Keep going. I'll All right. fill so, in gaps later on if there's so anything coming up, but yeah. Generally Before. speaking, right. There are, I would say three, three ways of looking at how you're going to pay off debt. One is you can uh, go the 10 year standard route, which is the most expensive monthly payment, but it's the fastest way of paying it off. And most folks that choose that route 
are people that know that they're going into the private sector and earning a substantial amount of money and can afford that payment. And they're, they've made the decision they're going to go the 10 year route and they're going to make a lot of money and they're going to throw as much at their debt as possible. And some of them even get second jobs to pay off their debt. Some of them have been working while they've been in grad school. And so they throw as much at their, as their debt as possible. And that's the private sector making lots of money. That's one route. The second route is you go into public service. You go into public service. Um, you make sure, and we'll talk briefly about that later, because there is a lot of, I guess, anxiety because the recent applications that, well, the recent applications that were submitted, not many were accepted. But there's a reason for that. It's a fairly new program, uh, and the requirements, you literally have to dot all your I's and cross your T's. So before people give up on that route, I would say, listen, you really need to go, we can go through a few of those steps later, but you really need to make sure that you've really checked all your boxes when you go down that route. And I think it's a great program for anybody that's going into public, into public service. And there's actually a couple of scholarships that you can use for that as well. Um, so that's the first approach, 10 year plan, private sector, pay it all off as quick as you can. Second, public service loan forgiveness. Third is, time-based forgiveness. So you have your income-based repayment. So if you're working someplace where it's not the public sector and you're not making that much money and uh, you're not making that much on an annual basis, then take the, in, take the time-based repayment, take the income-based repayment where you pay 10 to 20 percent um, of your salary and they, they give you the formula how you can adjust that. Um, but when you take that route, don't freak out about it because it will be forgiven. Like, don't have the th think, okay, I have 250,000. Oh my God, I need to do X, Y, Z. No, you're paying the amount that they've told you is according to your salary. And in, this, in 20 to 25 years, it will be forgiven. It's that simple. And so, and the key difference though between the public service loan forgiveness, which is why I love the program versus the income, uh, the time, sorry, the time driven forgiveness is that with the time-driven forgiveness, you do have to pay taxes on whatever debt is forgiven. Whereas with public service loan forgiveness, you don't have to pay any taxes. So it's a really, really fantastic program. And the projections they have on public service loan forgiveness is that they do expect that in the next four to six years, if the program continues as it does, that they will have an acceptance rate or approval rate of roughly 24%. Once people have figured out what they need to do. And so I'm going to just dive into that now. The biggest reason most of our clients do not get approved the first time around is they didn't work for an employer that qualified. Very simple. They just did not work for an employer that was, that was considered a 5013 um, or a, you know one of those nonprofits that qualify for the program. Two, they work for such an employer, but they didn't file the paperwork every year. So if you're, you don't file the proper paperwork every year, that won't happen. Or three... They had somewhere along the line skipped a couple of payments or they were in default. And so it didn't count towards those 120 months that you need for public service loan forgiveness. So that's, that's those three strategies there. So questions? So I have a question. So if someone was denied because they didn't cross the T's and yeah. dot the I's, um, they can reapply mm -hmm. after dotting T's or yeah. hopefully crossing them. Um, yeah. And is there any setback associated with that? Or is that well, the success rate pretty high upon reapproval? Or? Well, if you follow all the instructions, what I generally do is I go with the, my clients on the phone with, with, uh, with the student loan company. And we basically ask them, okay, what did we do wrong? And usually it takes a while to get them on the phone. That's the biggest issue, right? So once you get the answers from them, what you've done wrong, which is actually the part that takes the longest, especially now with COVID, people are just not answering the phone. Um, so it could take weeks, it could take months, but once you find out from them what the issues are and you basically check your boxes, then it goes in for us. So there is a delay, but it will be forgiven so long as you com complete all those um, requirements. Um, Dr. Haley in the chat has asked, I thought you had to pay taxes on the principal. I think she's talking about the public forgiveness one. No, you don't. Any amount that is forgiven, you do not have to pay taxes on it. Any, any amount that's forgiven is tax-free. 
from what I understand. I'll look into it once more and I'll send out an email, but that, that's what that's what I've been told. That would be great. Um, well, I'll jot that down in case I'm like <laughs> going on air saying something completely wrong. This is super helpful. Um, other people feel free to chime in the chat as well because... I can picture everybody licking their lips right now thinking of <laughs> this kind of advice. It's really hard to get. Um, so I guess some of the other questions, what are some of the pros and cons of considering private loans? So in the first place, private loans versus right. public loans. It's very simple. If you can get, if you can get a public loan from the government, you get the public loan. Um, because what happens is as you've seen with, what happened recently with COVID is that there are certain benefits. And I think I gave Michelle um, a couple of resources from, we actually did a four part series on student loans, federal versus private and refinancing which lenders on YouTube. So you folks are welcome to go in there and watch those. So if you can get um, public um, student loans, you should get them. You should take them all day long. And ideally you should take, you should take the ones where you don't start paying interest until um, until you graduate, right? The ones that are subsidized. What happens with these public student loans is exactly what happened during COVID. Like you get certain leniency from the government during difficult times that you would not get with a private lender. So, for example, in March they passed the CARES Act, where you could you stopped payment, um, interest was no longer added, and loans in default. You know they weren't chasing you for. Um, I can tell you, I had clients with private student loans where there were a lot of tears. There was a lot of begging. Um, there were a lot of hours on the phone with private lenders trying to get just a month of, or two of interest forbearance. So private loans are just not as friendly. They're not as, they're not as flexible. And they also don't, on this flexibility thing, they don't accommodate you if say you lose your job. You know, if you lose your job, you can go on forbearance and go on deferment. It's much easier to do that than with a private lender. And usually the period is much longer. So I'm always an advocate of public student loans. I, I got mostly on my undergrad was public student loans. I got a few public ones in grad school as well. But if you can get the public loans, go for them. If you can get grants, if you can get scholarships, go for them as much as you can. And it takes a lot of work, but the amount of money that you can save makes it so worthwhile. And feel free to disagree you know, as well. I mean, you've been through the process. I don't, I haven't been through sort of, you know, the therapy education. I've, I can only speak from a business and legal side, which they also have a lot of loans. Right. <laughs> no, this is great advice. Um, someone typed in asking, where do you apply for loan forgiveness? Oh, you and have someone else said, how do you know which employers offer loan forgiveness? It's probably related. So it's, if you can talk a little more about this yeah. procedure. If I, if I go, I'll grab the website for you now. My other screen here. They actually have a whole, let's see if I can grab. Okay. So you go to the studentaid.gov website. And literally, it, should I type this in for you guys? Uh, just studentaid.gov yes yeah, studentaid.gov and then I'm going to type this in here <laughs> manage loans they will have a whole section that goes through every um, every single thing that you need to do and fill out and also what um, which employers the best thing to do is actually to go and ask your employer because your employer will know whether they qualify for the program. Here you go. Okay. And that's where you go to find more information. I'm also going to do a YouTube video in January on public service loan forgiveness. And I already mentioned to Michelle, I'll do one specifically for therapists as well. So I'll shoot that over to Michelle and she can send it to all of you whenever, you know, whenever it's out sometime in January. But all the information should be on that list. That's great. Um, we're putting all your YouTube videos on blast Super. as well. <laughs> Looks like you have some really informative stuff there. Um, we had a question about the Peace Corps for loan forgiveness. If there's anything you can say about that? I haven't had an experience with the Peace Corps. I will, I will say that I know that people do apply. So you should definitely, the best thing to do is go on their website 
and find their number, send them an email. Email is the best way at the moment. Um, it's very hard to still get them on the phone, especially with the holidays. But the peace mm-hmm. port in theory should work. Um, but I don't have any personal experience with any clients from there, so I can't really speak to that. I don't want to sure. give like, wrong information. Fair. Um, we had, again, you sort of addressed how the, you should ask your employer, but they someone asked if state universities just in general automatically meet the requirement for public service. No, Long not autom- not automatically. You you'll have to check. You'll have to check with the institution themselves. That makes sense. And the other thing, in terms of the plans we had talked about, it's in one of the YouTube videos. But there's a loan simulator. If you just go on Google and Google um, student loans and loan simulator, you can actually they will help you figure out what the best repayment plan for you is. That you fill in a bit of information. You hook up your fast. All your loans are in there, and then you can calculate. Um, you can calculate based on your income what plan you should go on. And I generally recommend that clients go on there once a year just to make sure that they're sort of on the right plan. When asking an employer about if they offer public service forgiveness, do you mean asking before, during, or after an interview? Is what someone. Oh, I would recommend being, well, if that's the route that you want to take, I would recommend being very upfront with them. Tell them, I think the conversation needs to be had. The one thing you should ask your employees, do they qualify? The second thing is, do they have any um, programs? Because some pro- some co- companies do have programs where they will give you X amount of money per year for your student loans, or they have certain providers. Like I know that some with Common Bond, so we work with Common Bond a lot If the if your credit score is high enough. So ask, first thing is be very upfront, tell them these are my student loans, it's a concern for me. Um, you know, does this organization qualify for public service loan forgiveness? And are there any, is there any way that you help out um, on student loans? I think it's a very fair question to ask. Most people are shy to ask that, but I don't think from a business and legal perspective, I always encourage my clients to ask because it is a lot of debt. Um, and, you know, it, you know you need, any help you can get, you, you should ask for it. Um, I'm not sure if this is on the question list. I don't think so, but um, what is your opinion about people trying to procure this loan forgiveness on their own versus hiring someone like you? Obviously, it's probably more helpful hiring somebody, but what are some pros and cons and what what were the dangers of not? Yeah, so there's two things, right? It it costs money to hire someone like me. Um, it's, It's not cheap. Um, but you know that you get it done right and you have somebody with the experience having said that, and it it saves you time because you're not going there. Like I, you know, I do this every week. Um, I know how to do it. So it saves you time and that's what you're paying for. You can try to do it yourself and people have succeeded doing it on, on their own. And if somebody says, listen, I don't, and that's the reason we are on YouTube because there are people that can't afford our services and we try to give as much education and guidance on there as they as possible. Um, so it, there's clearly people that have done this on their own. There's also people, though, that um, have failed on their own. And what I would say is when you do it on your own, you really like don't see something that says, OK, you need to check stop. You, Step one, step two, step three. Don't think, oh, well, I kind of will do step three and maybe they'll, you know, maybe, maybe I don't do, if you don't do it, you're not going to, they're not going to forgive the loan. It's that simple. So you really need to follow the recipe that they give you and the instructions that they give you. And it's completely possible to do it on your own. Um, but you just, it takes a bit longer. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so if someone were going to be smart and try to procure someone yeah. <laughs> services of someone like yourself, Besides calling you up, are, is there what's a good starting point for trying to find help from a financial advisor? Or how would you go about googling that? Where do you where would they start? Okay, the first step you, it's really this this link that we just gave you on federal student um, from the federal student um, aid, and really go there. Go to this public service loan forgiveness website. Um, and usually clients, some the clients that do come to me, first of all, either they don't even bother going on there. I tell them and look, I tell them, listen, go on there and have a look. They can't even be bothered to go on there. That's one type of person that comes to me. The second person is I looked. I have no idea what they just said. Right. Um, and if that's you, um, either call someone like me or find somebody in your network or your fr- circle of friends that has done it 
um, and ask them for help. That's another option. I guess my question was, how did they find people like you? <laughs> Google financial advice, student loan advisors. Student I'll be loan advisor. I didn't, yeah, I, student loan advisors, student loan advice. I think what happens is a lot of people like myself, so my core business actually is giving financial wellness workshops, so education on all finance topics. So most people that come to me don't come to me initially for the specific they didn't initially come to me for the specific uh, service of student loans. They came to me for education, general personal finance, how to create, like I said, a nest egg, how to, where to put their finances, how to do their retirement accounts. But more and more, I'm seeing people come to me first about student loans because they need to sort that out first because before they can sort out how much to save for retirement, how much can they pay for insurance, how much can they pay for disability. So more and more student loans seems to be driving the discussion. So you will find student loan advisors out there, but it's um, it's still a, a sort of nascent um, industry, I would say. And there's another website. It's just a great student loan hero, either .org or .com. I think it's .org. Um, they also have great advice on there. If you want to read through stuff, I find that the stuff is very useful. Uh, they also had advisors on there that also charge, though, but that's that would be the other place I would go to. That's great advice. Um, we're blazing through this because you've got that fast New York talking style. So. Am I talking too fast? I'm sorry. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> and my husband is Austrian, yeah? So he always tells me to slow down. <laughs> no, I appreciate that style. Um, I think you're well, dropping we knowledge. Also, we can talk a bit about the, um, the thinking at the moment for you guys that do have loans that are, are federal student loans. If you have federal student loans and you're kind of putting payment towards them, my, what we generally recommend to our clients is don't, not right now when you don't have to. Um, that's not to say you should go and have a spending spree. Put that money into a separate savings account um, and just hold on to it. Just because you kind of don't know where the economy is going. Um, you don't know if your job is secure. And that's just for you guys, even for the ones you love. You don't know if your job is secure. You don't know how long this recession is going to last. So if you don't have to make payments on your student loans, if interest is not growing on your federal student loans, then, you know, if you're, you have savings, put that money into a savings account. And when you find out that you do have to make payments again um, and or the economy is improving, um, then you can put that savings chunk towards your student loans, right? I mean, because there's no point. You're not getting any benefits by paying them right now. So just hang on to it for a bit longer for security. Um, and for those that are thinking that are making not, how do you say it, where you're, you're really not earning a substantial amount in your full-time job as a therapist and you have, pub, you have private loans. So I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know what the politicians are going to do. But there is talk that they will forgive up to $10,000 of private student loans. But it's only for those that are really on a low income earning job. So if you have private student loans, you're thinking about refinancing, I'd recommend waiting. I mean, it's already like, you know, almost Christmas. Wait another couple of weeks and see what comes out from the administration to see if there's any further talk about forgiving uh, private student loans um, and, and then take action. Now, listen, if you have $250,000 of private student loans, at a 6% rate or 7% rate, you should look into refinancing. And those videos that we have, you can we go through the top three lenders that we use as well and what kind of the, the requirements that they look for. I think sort of connected to the idea of when is a good time to think about refinancing your loans is when to consider consolidating loans. Yeah. The consolidating thing, what you guys need to understand about consolidating, it actually doesn't change much. The only thing it changes is it takes, say you have 10 loans at different interest rates. You, it All it does is it combines them into one loan. You're not paying less, you're not paying less interest. It just means, and I'm all for minimalizing your finances, simplifying them. So I generally recommend consolidating whenever you can. The one caveat is public service loan forgiveness. Again, this is what ticks people off a bit. If you are already um, on this path towards public service loan forgiveness, do not consolidate your loans. The moment you consolidate them, you start from year zero again. 
you need another 120 um, consecutive payments. So consolidating is really up to you. If you're like, okay, I have 10 loans. Um, I can't look at these 10 loans. I just want one. That's fine. Right. And there's also the consolidation where you have parent plus loans that you consolidate them and then they qualify for certain loans that didn't qualify for public service loan forgiveness. If you consolidate them together, um, as long as they're not private loans, then you can qualify for public service loan forgiveness. But if you are on the public service loan forgiveness program, definitely think, well, don't consolidate if you're already on the public service loan forgiveness program. You do not want to start from zero again. Wow. That's, that's something really yeah, important. People <laughs> yeah. People, people don't realize that. And that's, that's also a, a big reason why a lot of these um, applications just didn't get approved because people consolidate their loan thinking it would be much easier to manage. And then they're like, listen, actually the clock reset. Now you're starting again from scratch. That's crazy. I don't make up the rules. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> How dare you do that to us? Um, so we have someone asking um, about tax payment or tax bomb at the end of an income-based loan payment. How would you manage that? Do we have to pay it all in one year? Okay, that, I'll be very honest, I, I cannot answer that because I'm not a tax advisor. As a personal finance advisor and coach, what I generally have my clients do is I take what their tax rate is, um, see what will be forgiven, and then we basically start them saving. We either start them saving or you can speak to the IRS and get on a payment plan. Those are the two options. And the third one, which is the expensive one, is going to a tax advisor and saying these are the three hypothetical scenarios that could happen. But the easiest way really is to speak to the IRS because you can get on a payment plan. And you can generally get on a very reasonable payment plan, but just know that there will be taxes to be paid. This is super informative, super helpful. Um, I guess it, until we think of any more specific questions right now, anything else that you can think of right now, um, just general advice for people can in any of these situations or anything else about student loans that can be helpful? Most of the people that are on this call are either already, they're already in school or they're thinking of going or into school or it's a mixture or they're already graduated or early th therapists. Like I'm trying to figure out sort of what the thinking is here. Are they considering grad school or? I don't know right now. I'm, I'm, the target audience I think was a lot of people who are already in grad school or early in their career. So probably right. they have already taken loans, but not okay. necessarily. There still could be a mix. Okay. So the question came in. I, you know, I love you guys. I love it when I get questions about whether I'm taking clients. Yes, I'm taking clients. There's a wait list till the end of January at the moment because I'm, I, I need to hire a coach. Um, we've had, we've just, yeah, we, we've, we've been, it's, it's been a very interesting year with COVID because it's really shown people they need to focus on their financial health. And so my piece of advice, I would say for you guys going generally into any job is, especially with student loans, is choose a path. I know it's hard. Choose whether you're going to go private or choose whether you're going to go pu public. If you have six figure student loans, choose that path that you want. So I have a few clients that come to me, you know, every couple of months, they're like, oh, well, you know, I'm on the public service loan forgiveness program, but I'm thinking of going private. Then they'll, then they'll come back and oh, but I, you know, I don't like the private world. I think I'm going to go back public. I'm like, listen, you're not going to pay off your student loans and you're never going to pay them off because you keep changing courses. Find something you like. Take that first year or two and find some. Do you like the private sector? Do you like the public sector? Um, choose one and then choose public service loan forgiveness or choose that high paying job that's going to, you know, pay you a lot of money um, that will help you pay for your student loans. And if not, accept the third group that you will be paying student uh, student loan debt off for the next 20, 25 years. But do not freak out. But like I say, that's really do not freak out about it. It will be forgiven. Um, but those are the three routes you have. And if you're not, if you haven't applied for grad school, so I'm the only one in my family that went to the grad school. And I'm the oldest. My sisters kind of looked at me and they were like, well, I'm not going to grad school because I don't want to pay off the debt. Um, and they're fine, right? But they're in different industries. They're fine. They're in tech. They're completely fine. Um, and think about, you know, for you, whatever you're doing is, is, is grad school, what level of grad school is needed? And do you really need that six figure grad school? Right. So I, I work with people. I work with a lot of people from business schools. Do you really need that super great name? Can you go in state? 
Um, those are a lot of considerations and kind of sucks, but you know, can you just kind of work while you're in grad school and, and make the money and suck it up the first couple of years? You can't have it all in life. And I always tell my clients, you can't have it all. If you spend all your money today, you're not going to have anything for retirement. It's that simple. So if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit, um, you can you can make it all manageable. So that's my advice. And so and, you know, once I don't let the student debt, once you figure out, don't let it don't let it like take over your life. Like you need to come up with a plan, figure it out because there's other aspects of your life that you need to think about. The people that you're serving, the people that you care for, your family, your retirement, you know, um, investing, things of buying a house, other aspects of your life. So you can't let the consumer you. So figure out your student loan strategy and kind of move on with it. Um, th that's, that's the advice that I have. And I know that it's overwhelming, um, but you know, there are people there that can help you and, you know, watch my YouTube videos. If you're not sure yet, at least that gives you a little bit of guidance on where to think about things. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what I have. This is great. Um, you got a couple of questions popping up in the yes. chat. If, if you, I'm happy to answer anything on personal finance as well. If you guys have it. Yeah. We we're still just, have another 12 minutes. So it doesn't have to be just on student loans, but happy we're to live streaming podcast style, taking, taking calls. Um, so someone has asked for time-based forgiveness with a repayment schedule based on your income. Is yeah. there paperwork that needs to be done year over year? I guess like the other. Yeah. You need to okay. file it every single year saying you need to confirm your income. Otherwise they don't know because they, they charge the payment, the monthly payment based on what your income is. You need to recertify your income every single year and you need to make sure that you do do that because if you don't, they'll kick you off the program. And you'll end the process. You can get back on. It's just more paperwork. So it's just easier to submit the employer form every single year. What I do with my clients is tell them, listen, put a date in your calendar. Gen generally, it's either December or January and send it every and send it that the same time every year. So you never forget. And when you get a new job, you need to recertify that as well. OK. Yeah. Um, for tax payment plans, would there be interest? Somebody asked. Yes. There's always interest. The government doesn't give you anything for free, unfortunately. Yeah. It's not credit. It's not credit card interest. So it's like it's. I think the, when I last looked at my clients, I think it was four or five percent. But it is still money. Okay. Um, someone asked, "Is there a maximum to the federal student loans?" For, for uh, particular, I'm guessing for a maximum that you can take out. I, I think there is, right? That's why you take the private loans. Yeah, yeah, no, there's a maximum. You apply for the you apply for it via FAFSA, and then they will tell you what they grant you. Um, and if your income is too high, then you will not get any of the um, sort of the the needs based programs. This is amazing stuff. I'm just seeing if we're getting anything else in the chat while I'm thinking of my own. Any other questions that I can think of? Um, what other questions that we had? Yeah. Next time I'll speak slower. I was actually no, this is we great. I was afraid we wouldn't get through it. I wanted to make sure we get as much stuff out as possible. No, we're you have been doing a phenomenal job at efficiently covering a lot of this. I'm going back over just to make sure. But I think we've covered pretty much everything that I was hoping to cover. Um, I can talk briefly about refinancing loans as well. Um, for those of you that do have a lot of student loan debt that's private and you're not, and you're earning a decent salary, um, now is a good time to refinance essentially. And the three lenders that we usually go with, with a, our first lender uh, of choice is Common Bond. Um, they, but you need a fairly high credit score for that, but they have the best rates. Um, they will allow you to um, have a co-signer. You can do it while you're in residency. So they're great in many, and you can customize your repayment plan. So that's common bond. Earnest is also great. That's our second go-to, um, but they won't take any co-signers. Um, and the third one is SoFi. SoFi is, those are the three great ones. Um, and SoFi has a lot of other stuff like pre-COVID, they did a bunch of stuff like, you, you know, you get together every month with, it's kind, of, it's kind of like refinance your student loan, get a credit card, and maybe you meet, you know, somebody that you like and you go out for a drink with them kind of thing as well. So it's a bit of networking. And that was how they pitched their 
services going forward. So those are the three lenders that I would suggest going with first. You can go onto their website and get a pre-approval, which means it won't um, it won't hit your credit score um, and see whether you, whether you qualify for any of those. And so really, this is somebody with private student loans um, that were taken out, say, any time pre pre-COVID because the rates are really at historically significant lows at the moment. So we have someone asking um, about how likely loan forgiveness is. I know you talked about this in the beginning that, yeah. um, but if you can just sort of address this idea that it feels like a lot of people are doing the paperwork and still being denied. and Yeah, the likelihood of loan forgiveness is, high if you do the paperwork. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just reading some of the notes. The likelihood for forgiveness is high if you follow all the rules. And there are rules. It's not something, you know, it's not something like you grab a glass of wine and you kind of do it over an hour and a half. Like you literally have to go, you have to go back to all the, so say, okay, public service loan, that's the other thing. Say that you worked for um, an organization that qualified. Then you went into the private sector for two years. Then you went back to a nonprofit. You can use those first two years at the nonprofit um, to, quali- to apply for the public service loan forgiveness. It counts. Um, but if you think there's my, – my whole thing is if you think you can get the free money, spend the day and literally it will take you a day. It will take you a weekend and go through all your paperwork and keep following up on it and make sure every single step has been followed through. If that's been done, then they will, like, they're not trying to be mean. They're just steps that you have to follow. And if you don't follow them, you don't meet the requirements. You just, you just don't get it. It's that simple. It's like, you know, there's certain rules when you travel to a country, you need a passport, you need vaccinations, you don't have them, they're not going to let you in. Um, and it's the same thing with public service loan forgiveness. It's a very new program. So the acceptance rate this year has already doubled from last year, which is from 1% to 2%. It's still progress, right? But um, so people are, are figuring out how to do it. And once the, that's why they think that in, you know, in a couple of years, it will be up to the 20, 30% because people have figured out the process by then. Don't forget, they only started this about a year and a half, two years ago. So the fact that this was the first time that um, people did it and it didn't work out well, it's kind of like a beta test, right? Nothing always is, nothing's perfect. Um, they could be clear. Clearly, it's not the clearest site either. Um, so I'm not saying that you know, they're all correct. But you know, if you follow the rules, it, your application will be accepted. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, I will let you guys know about future videos that are coming up. Uh, also, there will be a replay for this. I think there's the landing page that Michelle has set up. And you guys just d- drop in your email there. Um, we'll send you a replay next week with some student loan refinancing tips and, you know, sort of e- websites you guys can go to for this public service loan forgiveness as well. Just pop your email in there. Any other questions, guys? You have me for another five minutes. <laughs> I don't know if you covered the, if I went, if I made years of payment to PSLF, but then went back to school to got more and got more loans. Does that mean those past payments will not count once I graduate and work again? Those past payments will count, but towards the loans you had before. So say that you took out new loans in grad school, you'd have to work another 10 years at a qualifying organization for those grad school loans to be paid off. So it's not that, you worked six years before, you had those loans before, and then you only have to work four more years after grad school. So for the year, for the loans that you had previously, you worked four more years. I'm just using my example. You worked six, went back to grad school, and did another four at a qualifying organization. So for your previous loans, they would be forgiven after four more years. But for your new grad school loans, you'd need the 10 years or the 120 months of qualifying payments. Right. Um. Someone asked, I think this was sort of answered already, but would you recommend asking the employer about public service loan forgiveness before the interview process, for example, through emailing them? And I, if I got yeah. you right, you would say, oh, yeah. <laughs> I would say, yeah, listen, I think it's, I personally think it's a great program. Any, like when a client comes to me and asks about, you know, student loans, the first thing I ask them is, are you working in the private sector or the public sector? Do you know if you qualify for public service loan forgiveness? Actually, that's the second question. The first question is how much in student loans you have. <laughs> Fair. 
Yeah. Um, I think someone else asked just, again, we're going to ask our employers, but, or potential employers, but yeah. in general examples of types of jobs that tend to qualify for. So hospitals, mm-hmm. um, generally most state and local government jobs, um, nonprofits. Um, if you guys on a search, if you guys want more information on this, Pop your email in there. I'll actually do the research and I'll give you, I'm just, I'd rather give you proper information and more detailed information that's accurate. So I'll put that in the freebie, um, the list of organizations that qualify. And and if I'll be right, your employer should know if they qualify. Absolutely. Um, but I will, I can put that into the freebie document and send it out to you guys as well. Organizations. Okay, so how are we doing? Any other questions? I think you're dropping knowledge bombs. <laughs> this is gold. I'm glad it was useful. I'm glad it was useful. I, you know, it's just you get there's so much weight around student loan debt. You know, it's going to hit 1.7 trillion dollars this year. Yeah, every year it goes up by yeah 0.1 trillion roughly at this point. Um, so guys, you, you guys, you guys are going to be great. You know, just, you know, do some research, watch our videos. I'll send out that freebie if you pop your emails in and I will do a segment specifically then on public service loan forgiveness for therapists and I'll have Michelle, um, email it out and, you know, and you guys, it'll be fine. We've all survived it. You'll, you'll survive it as well. <laughs> I think so that's huge so because... Provided. I think t- just talking about money this long has got all these therapists panicking regardless, even though you're being helpful. <laughs> and no, no, you, should, just, no, would... listen, you should don't panic. Like li- literally that's our goal is to educate you so that you don't panic. Okay. Uh, that's my goal is to calm exactly. you down and tell you that it is going to be okay. It really will be okay. Just have to figure out the right way to do it. It's good to know. Um, all right. Well, we made it. You did a fantastic job. I really appreciate Thanks, all the Matt. expertise. Um, no other questions coming up. So I think we'll wrap up this part again. Thanks right. so much. Great. Thanks, guys. And Thank everybody you. check out all the resources that have been going down in the chat. And it's going to come in the freebie. There's oh, these YouTubes as well. You've got loads of resources. So I know. You guys found me at the right time. <laughs> plenty of places to go from here. All right. All right. See you guys. Have a great all one. Right. Thank you very Bye. much. All right. Bye, guys.